One thing I promised you guys on the channel that we would take a look at is what's happening to home prices in the Southwest Florida region after Hurricane Ian. And since it's been roughly a month since the storm made landfall, we finally have some time to look at at least one month's worth of data. Now this might not be a huge indicator of where things are going because it's only one month after the storm, but it is a start and we can kind of do a follow up on this again, maybe after like three months of data are in, something like that. But right now we have the first month to look at and we're just going to be looking at some of the immediate areas that got hit pretty hard with the hurricane like Cape Coral, Sanibel, Fort Myers Beach, places like that that really got the worst of the storm and they had the most devastation. And by the way, guys, today I'm in the North Shore Open Space Park, which is a uh, oceanfront park. I'll take you guys over by the beach too, with a ton of trees and plants around here. It's the biggest park in Miami Beach. And uh, it's just a nice little place to come sometimes. They're doing some renovations here also to uh, spruce up the north end of the park. Now first, let's take a look at what's happening with home prices in Sanibel Island because I think that place was probably ground zero for literally the amount of devastation they got. It seemed like everything there got completely destroyed guys for the most part. Almost uninhabitable for up until even now essentially and so I want to see what's going on over there and from August to September of this year the sold prices, the median sold prices, went from 1.3 million down to 962,000. And if anybody saw my first video after Hurricane Ian when we were talking about some of this data, I predicted then that home prices would initially go down. You're going to see a drop at first. And then later on, you're going to see a comeback and skyrocket back up. So that's kind of what I think is going to happen. So far, it seems to be following this trend in Sanibel. The amount of homes that were sold there went from 23 to 10 from August to September. So it, this isn't a huge market. It's a pretty small place to begin with. So it's not like they're getting, you know, hundreds or thousands of closed sales all the time there. But, you know, it did go down. So that's the first thing. What's going to happen, especially in Sanibel, because it's such a rich area that a lot of people are going to come in with a lot of money, buy up these properties for a big discount, and then come in and build something brand new that can last through a much bigger storm. Look at this spider, guys. That's one thing I always see here this time of year. Look at this thing. It's huge. I don't know if the camera does it justice, but it's pretty big. If I put my hand there, it's pretty big spider. <laughs> But really what I think a place like Sanibel should look at doing is since the whole island got pretty much destroyed on some level, they should be looking at renovating the entire place, guys. Like, you know, redoing all of the utilities so that they have underground power and maybe some more solar panels in the area to help with keeping power during the storm, figuring out the drainage situation better, and of course only building homes that could withstand a category four or five hurricane in the future, which I think they're pretty much gonna have no choice uh, at this point to do something like that. So the days on the market in Sanibel didn't really change all that much. They're saying that Sanibel is a somewhat competitive market right now. So let's move on to Fort Myers Beach. This is another area that got really hit really hard, probably just as bad as Sanibel in reality. The interesting thing here is they have seen a decline, but not quite as much as Sanibel. But I think Sanibel was probably already just too expensive to begin with. You know, 1.3 million is a lot of money for a house anywhere, guys. I don't care where you live. So they went from 779,000 median home price in Fort Myers down to 735 in just one month from August to September. And the number of homes that have sold has also gone down considerably as well. But if we look at the data, it was already starting to go down before the storm and then this probably just made it even worse. That's my guess. And the days on market there are starting to go up. If we look at that, it started off as like 14 days on the market, then it moved up to 30 days on the market, and now it's up to 50 days on the market. So that's a pretty big increase. And right now Redfin is giving Fort Myers Beach a very low competition score, only a 10. So right now 
if you want to buy real estate there, you're not looking at a whole lot of competition in general. And that's what a lot of people are doing. You know, they're going in there, trying to look for deals already, buying up houses that are completely destroyed, hoping to get big discounts. So I think you're going to see the prices shoot back up as more people do this. See, all this out here is brand new. Before this was all just sand, none of these trees and bushes were here and they made all these little walkways out to the beach, which is pretty nice. And you see all these trees and dunes here with all these plants. This type of wildlife here is crucial infrastructure in case we get slammed with a hurricane over here in Miami Beach, guys. Because if you look at what happened over in Sanibel and in Fort Myers Beach, places like that, they have buildings that are literally right on the sand like where we're walking over to right here okay so the buildings were coming up to like this area and there's no buildings on the sand here at all all we have here is a lots of dunes and trees to help protect the neighborhood in case we do have a big storm event this will dramatically help with the amount of storm surge that miami beach will get and this has been a work in progress this wasn't always here so they've been planting this and making this in order to uh, help the area survive a little bit better. All right, let's move on to Cape Coral, another area that got hit pretty hard with the storm, but that area was kind of hit or miss. You saw some houses over there that got completely destroyed and other ones that made it through pretty, pretty good actually. So this was kind of a mixed bag when it came to damage in this area, which makes more sense because it is more inland and not quite as susceptible to the amount of water that poured into areas like Fort Myers Beach and Sanibel. So over there, the median home price has also come down from 414,000 to 395,000. Days on market starting to go up and it was already going up before uh, the hurricane hit as well. And then also the number of homes sold has plummeted quite a bit. It went down from 502 in August to 433 now. So that's a pretty big drop. And that's why I think we need to kind of take a long, longer approach to this and look at, okay, what happened to the prices there over a three month and six month period to really get an idea of what's happening in the area. Cause one month is kind of soon, but that's why I waited a month because trying to do it before that, we wouldn't really have anything significant to look at. But surprisingly, according to Redfin, the competition score is at 65. So it's still a pretty competitive market right now. And people are still buying in this area, probably also because the prices are relatively low compared to some of the surrounding areas like Naples, for example, which we'll move on to next. Now, Naples is a very interesting one, and I know that they did not get hit nearly as hard with this storm as Fort Myers and north of there did. They didn't really get the worst of it, but they definitely got some damage. But prices there actually went up, guys. It went up from 610,000 to 615,000 in just one month. And the number of homes sold, though, is down pretty significantly from 411 down to 326. And the median days on the market was already rising before the hurricane and rose a little bit more to 30 days on average on the market over there. And the competition score right now is sitting at about 19. So still not that competitive in Naples, which also makes sense because, you know, it's a very expensive market. When you're looking at median home prices over $600,000, it's a very rich area, guys. And there are plenty of homes over there that cost well over two, three million dollars. So areas like that also are not gonna be as susceptible to any sort of economic downturn, even when it comes to a hurricane, because people have the money to rebuild and continue to just move on with life as usual, you know, regardless of what's going on. And that area, didn't get leveled like Fort Myers did. Port Charlotte is an interesting one because this is the cheapest market on this list and they have seen their median price drop about 30,000 in one month. It went from 330K to 302K and the number of homes that have sold has really plummeted in this area, which is surprising given the fact that it's the most affordable. You're looking at from August, 219 homes sold down to 159 
in September. So that's a pretty big difference. The days on market there are also steadily rising. Went from 16 to 23 recently. I'm not really sure how much weight I put into Redfin's competition score because all the indicators are showing that the market there is you know, not really doing that great, but yet they put the competition at 71, which is the highest one we've seen on the list. So that's pretty interesting considering the amount of sales is going down as well as the median home price. So maybe we shouldn't be looking at Redfin's competition score because it seems to be pretty useless. But the numbers themselves are important, I think, to look at. This used to be the old sand path here before they put in the paver path that I showed you guys a little bit earlier. That's all it used to be is just some sand back here behind the park. That was it. Now, one thing that you guys also asked me about is rental prices. What is happening to rental prices after the hurricane? And to be honest, guys, it's harder to find good information about this, but I did look at some of the data from Zumper.com. They track a bunch of the rental data and they're a rental website. So we'll look at some of their data. If we look at Fort Myers, for example, we can see the prices for one bedroom rentals starting to go up, but not so much for two bedrooms and three bedrooms and things like that. If we look at Naples, it stayed about the same for one bedrooms, but for two bedrooms, it's rising significantly. It went from $3,000 in July to $4,000 today. So that is quite a big increase. But if we look at the pass, you can see this kind of up and down roller coaster effect of rental prices over there. And most likely this is due to the seasonal rental price going up. You know, we see every year we have a bunch of snowbirds come down and Naples is a very popular destination for snowbirds. And when you look at the chart, you can see it really goes up in the winter time, goes back down in the summer and just keeps doing that roller coaster effect essentially. One big place that I decided to look at here was Orlando because Orlando, a lot of people thought that people were gonna be moving there. Let's see what happens because it's inland. A lot of people might feel it's more safe to move over to this area. Orlando rental prices were already going up prior to the storm. So I don't think that's a very good indicator to look at really, because even if it's up more now, you know, it was already going up before the storm. So could it have made it worse? Could it have made the area more desirable? Maybe but there's no way to really know for sure. I also thought maybe a lot of people might come on over to Miami because it's not that far away from Fort Myers. It's like a two and a half hour drive. And same thing with Naples. We're about the same as well, guys. One bedroom, two bedroom prices are hovering around pretty much the same before and after the storm. I can't find an area where rental prices really shot up because of this storm. So maybe they did and I just didn't check the right places, but, um, so far from what I can tell, it doesn't seem like it actually had a big effect on rental prices, which is something that a lot of us thought would happen, including me. Got a dog park over here. Now I wanna cover another aspect of real estate separate from all of the hurricane data, and that is real estate when it comes to inflation. You know, typically a lot of people say that Real estate is a good hedge against inflation, and I have always been one to think that as well. But right now, it can kind of look like that's not the case, because if you look at it, we have really high inflation. At the same time, median home prices are going down. However, guys, that's one thing that everyone needs to realize. Yes, are we seeing home prices going down? Check, yes. Are they gonna continue to go down for the foreseeable future? Yes, check, probably, but, in the long run, housing and real estate tends to be a hedge against inflation because in the long run, the home prices will most likely be higher than they are now. If you look 10 years into the future from now, the prices you see today will probably be higher. Okay. And that's just kind of the way it goes. And so a lot of people might think, well, I always heard that real estate was a hedge against inflation, but I'm not really seeing that because of the home prices going down in a time when we have high inflation. And the good thing is with real estate, if you have a mortgage, the one thing that will never change is your fixed rate mortgage payment, which is why you know I'm always hammering to you guys that the best thing is to get a fixed rate instead of an adjustable one. 
especially if you're in it for the long term. So that mortgage payment will never change. Sure, your taxes will change, your insurance will change, and some other costs related to owning the property, but the actual payment that you pay to your mortgage servicer will never change during the life of that loan. So that's one way that real estate can also help you hedge against inflation because you have that locked in rate. And just look at what things cost today compared to 20 years ago, guys. And somebody that got a loan 20 years ago on an investment property paying only $800 a month and they're collecting $2,000 a month in rent, maybe they used to only collect 1,200, you know? So that's a massive increase over the years and that is just another way besides the appreciation and that's just one other way that real estate can be a hedge against inflation in the long run. So I hope that makes sense. One other thing I wanted to talk about real quick is a few videos ago we talked about Canada and how they are putting in a temporary ban on all foreign investment in the Ontario province, specifically near Toronto, because the home prices are completely out of control and there's just not enough places for people to live. Well, that brings me to the next story because I just saw a story today saying that Florida is still the number one state for international buyers. So Florida brings in 24% of international buyers, California 11%, Texas 8%, Arizona 7%, New York 4%. And here's where the buyers are coming from. The number one buyer, guys, is China. Just like you guys were talking about in the comments, China is the number one buyer of Florida real estate when it comes to international buyers and all international buying of real estate here. And then that gets followed up by Canada, India, Mexico, Brazil, and Colombia as the runner-ups. So one thing I wanna know from you guys, do you think the US, specifically states like Florida and California and Texas that are getting a decent chunk of their real estate getting bought up by foreigners like China and these other countries, do you think they should put a ban in place just like Canada's doing to hedge against this and try to make the area more affordable for locals? Let me know your thoughts. I'm really curious to know what you guys think. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the bell notification down below. You'll get alerted every time I put out a new video. And if you don't want to wait for that, check out my next video on the screen right over here. And I'll see you guys in the next one.